Now in this video, we'll talk about uh, two of the features, BPDU guard and BPDU filter. So probably we'll be talking about BPDU guard and BPDU filter, and then we'll be verifying how, how exactly they work by, by implementing some small basic lab. Now to understand this BPDU guard and BPDU filter, we need to get back to the port fast. If you, if you remember in the previous topic, we have discussed a feature called port fast. So let me just quickly revise what is port fast feature. By default, each and every port, the access ports, it can be a normal port or a trunk port. It will go through something called listening and the learning stages for the next, for the default 30 seconds timers. Now, in general, on the access ports, we really don't want this listening and the learning stages. What we can do is we can simply go to that particular ports and we can enable a feature called port fast. Now, once we enable the feature called port fast, it's going to disable the spanning tree on that particular port. So which means it's not going through listening and learning stages. Now these ports transitions immediately into forwarding without listening, without learning stages. So they are going to bypass the listening and the learning stages. So no more listening and learning stages. Now the good thing about the port fast is it's going to minimize that default uh, convergence time on the access port from 30 seconds to the immediately into forwarding. But at the same time, uh, there might be some uh, issues, security issues like, uh, take an example, I have some, some user, maybe one of my user sitting in the LAN, he got one switch, maybe a four port switch, okay, or maybe accidentally or one of my junior engineer uh, tried to connect this particular port by removing from the, from the computers, he tried to connect to the one of the switch here. Now, what happens if that particular port, which is enabled with port fast, is connecting to a layer two switch? Now, in this scenario, if, if you do something like this, there is a possibility that it is going to create some loops because uh, there is no BPDU, there is no port fast, uh, there is no spanning tree running here, which means because there is a port fast enabled, now the switch will do broadcast and this broadcast will be forwarded back and then it is going to create the loops. Now this is something we really don't want and we want to ensure that we, we should have some security or protection against this kind of this kind of issues. Now that protection will be your BPDU guard and BPDU filter features. Now we, we definitely prefer to use port fast, but at the same time we need to have some solution against this kind of this kind of things. So what we can do is it's always recommended to use port fast, but at the same time it should be used along with a BPDU guard or BPDU filter. Now let us see how BPDU guard or BPDU filter is going to work. Now what BPDU guard will do is if any port fast port, if any port fast port, the port which is enabled with port fast receives a BPDU message. Now receives a BPDU message means if that particular port fast port, if it is connecting to a computer, there is no possibility of receiving any BPD message because the computers will not generate or understand the BPD messages. Now, if accidentally, if you connect a switch to that particular ports, in those kind of scenarios, the switch, the switch, whichever you connect on this ports will send a BPD message. Now, which means now the switch will understand that this is a port fast port and I'm receiving a BPD message, which means opposite side of the device is connecting to a switch. And if a port fast port receives a BPD message, probably what it is going to do is the BPD guard is going to simply put the port into error disable state. It simply put the port into error disable state. It's more like a shutdown port where it will not be forwarding any traffic. It's more like, uh, like a shutdown port. So it's far more better than creating the loops, right? So that is one thing uh, where what BPD guard will do. And even we can also use alternatively called BPU filter. Now the BPD filter is going to work slightly different with uh, when you compare with the BPD guard. Now BPD guard put the ports into error disable state if it receives a BPD message on the port fast ports. Now these are the port fast ports. If they receive the BPD message, they will receive only when you connect any switch here. Now, in case of BPD filter, instead of putting the port into error disable state, it is going to disable 
the port fast it is going to disable the port fast and which means it is going to re-enable the spanning tree so let's take an example if you have some switch connected here on this ports now they start sending the bpd messages now once it receives the bpd messages it says that you are no more a port fast port i'm going to run a normal spanning tree and according to the normal spanning tree it will ensure that any one of the link goes into blocking and in this case also it will prevent from creating the loops now these are the two things uh, what happens in case of bpd guard and bpd filter and and also we'll see some configuration as well so just a quick things if, if a port fast port receives a bpdu if you are enabling port fast along with bpd guard in that case if it port fast port receives a bpdu it will put the port into error disabled state whereas if you are using a port fast port with with bpdu filter in this case the port is not going to error disabled state instead it's going to re-enable the spanning tree which means it is going to disable the port fast on that particular port so this is a major difference between this bpdu guard and bpdu filter let's see the command line how to configure again the BPDU guard, just like we do BPDU uh, port fast, we can either enable globally in the global configuration mode by using a command called spanning tree port fast BPDU guard default, or we can enable on a specific ports by using a range command. Now, again, we are assuming that the port fast is enabled here. So we need to enable port fast and then BPDU guard and BPDU, BPDU guard or BPDU filter. Okay. And we can verify with some specific show commands. That is something we'll be getting into that more in detail in the next video with LUM Labs. Now, in case, how you are going to come to know whether the port is in error disabled state? There are some specific show commands we can use. Show interface status error disabled. Now, it's going to show you what are the ports, uh, the list of ports, which are in error disabled state. And also, it will show you the reason for that. Means what, what is the reason? There are some other other kind of uh, implementations also we can use which can put your port into a reducible state. It shows you the reason as well. Now this port will be in a reducible state and you, you, you might see some console messages when it is putting that port number 2 into a reducible state. Now probably this port will be in a reducible state as long as uh, you don't do anything on that. If you want to put this port back into up, we need to go to that particular interface F0 by 2. We need to say shutdown. We need to do it in manual shutdown and we can say no shutdown command. Okay. So in case if it is again receiving the BPDU, in that case again it will put the port into error disabled state. Now this is one way to get back your port back to up state. Or we can also configure something called error disabled recovery. We can we can make the port to automatically recover after some specific amount of time. I can simply say 60 seconds after 60 seconds it will again put the port back to up or we can change it to 120 seconds as per our requirement now there are two alternatives to configure the port back to up state uh, that's something we can we'll, we'll see more in the command line in probably in our next video now bpd filtering as i said bpd filter also can be enabled either globally in the global configuration mode or we can also enable the BPDU filter on the interface mode. Now, in both the cases, it is not going to put the port into a reducible state. Instead, it's going to re-enable the spanning tree. Now, there is a slight variation here. Again, if you are going to configure in the global configuration mode, the port fast port receives any BPDU message. In that case, it is going to take out the port fast status. That's what I discussed, which means it will remove the port fast from that particular port and then it is going to re-enable the spanning tree so that's something what happens in case of in case of global configuration mode if you do that the interface will still send and receive the bpd messages uh, and if the bpd received the interface loses its port fast status and bpd filtering also will be disabled now in case if you enable on the interface there is a slight variation if you enable on the interface, probably if, if a interface which is enabled with BPDU filter, if you configure on the interface, in, in those kind of scenarios, if it receives any BPDU message, probably it is going to ignore those BPDU messages. 
So it's not going to accept or it's, it's simply going to ignore the received BPD messages and the port will not go into shutdown state. This basically means it's, it's not going to run spanning tree, but it's going to simply ignore those messages. And in both the cases, it's not going to create any loops. Now that's a slight difference in, in enabling the BPD filtering in the global configuration mode and in the interface mode. In the global configuration mode, it will simply disable the port fast and re-enable the spanning tree. Now in this case, it is opposite somewhat. It will, it, is, it will ignore the BPD messages, but it will still will mean the port, port fast state, but it's, it's not going to run the spanning tree in this scenario. So probably we'll, we'll be getting into more in detail like verifying the these two features by connecting some L3 uh, layer 2 switches and then we'll, we'll try to enable BPD guard and BPD filter and then we'll see the port status and also we'll, we'll verify some specific show commands in our next video.